do see this as a reminder to take at least one day this month for you. Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we are doing my 24 hour readathon announcement. So this readathon is going to be taking place on October the 18th, which yes, I know is another midday week, but the same thing as last time. If you can't do it then and you have a different day in the month of October that works better for you, then go for it. This is a very relaxed readathon. It's very much a do it how you want to. If you want to turn this into a week long or a month month long readathon then please feel free to do so. I do this because once every two months it gives me a chance to just sit back and read for a day. I don't do any editing. I film but only for the readathon. I don't film anything else and it's just time for me to relax and not feel guilty about reading and that's all this is for. But I do set a few prompts because I have had a few of you take part especially last time when you took part in the translated readathon. This time we're going to do classics because to me October is the month of horror classics and I love it. So I've come up with again four prompts so if you don't like classics or you don't particularly want to read them please use these four prompts to whatever books that you would like that you think will fit. Don't feel like it has to be a classic book but let's let's just get to it. Let's just enjoy this. Okay so the first prompt is a gothic literature book but if you don't enjoy classics you can just change this to any gothic setting whether it's like fantasy or whatever if it's got a darker atmospheric gothic feel to it go for it. For me I'm specializing in classics this month so I've gone with the uncensored picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I have been talking about this a lot recently because I got it recently and I'm so excited to actually read this. I didn't realise there was an uncensored version out there. It's not widely sold in different bookstores. In the UK I think there's like three places that do it. I found it through a TikTok video of someone that was talking about it and I ended up buying it from Queer Lit UK and they are a bookseller up in Manchester where they focus on queer literature. So really really excited for this one I can't wait. From what I know from the TikTok video is there is a lot more scenes of like debauchery and stuff in this why it was censored and taken out. I've read the original classic a couple of years ago. I would love to read the actual uncensored version because what I thought was the original is actually censored so this is the original and I'm very excited for it. If you don't know what The Picture of Dorian Gray is about, we are following Dorian Gray and he has sold his soul to the devil basically to constantly be young and pretty and beautiful and nothing can happen to him. However, there is a picture of him that's been painted, a portrait. This portrait for everything that should have happened to Dorian, every ravage that should have taken place on his body or things like that instead happens to this portrait and he keeps it hidden away so that no one can actually see it and everyone who he's with like they've all grown up and they question like how has he stayed this young he looks exactly the same but he's dabbled in so many things like he definitely shouldn't be looking this way anymore and I I really think it's fantastic there's been so many adaptations of Picture of Dorian Gray there's been so much it is an amazing gothic literature classic this was good this was brilliant so I'm very excited to read the uncensored version so it is a part partial reread but I can't wait to see what's actually what was changed like yeah can't wait. So the second prompt is to read a short story. So again I've gone with classics but you can go with anything which I think I'm going to stop saying that now because I've said that enough um, but you can do whatever you want with this read from. And a short story that I'm going to read from is this collection. So this is the collection of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde and other stories by Robert Louis Stevenson. I've actually read a couple. So I've already read Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Absolutely loved that. Then I listened to Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. She actually did a video where she was telling the story, um, the short story, which is The Body Snatcher. It's a very short story, it's only 20 pages long, but she made a video where she was actually telling the story, reading it out loud. Fantastic video, I loved it so much. Actually, you know, I do feel like re-watching that video. It was so good, she did vibes with it, like the atmosphere of it all. It was perfect, so I've already listened to that one. So the next one for me to read, there's three more, um, we have The Bottle Imp, and this one is 30 pages long. 
So that's definitely one that I'm going to be getting read in the uh, 24 hour readathon. Oh, I was going to say the uncensored version Dorian Gray looks like a big book that's actually all notes. So the actual book is only 160 pages long, which is why I've put it in this because I think that's really doable. And then with 30 pages on this, that's two books and we're only at 190 pages. That's doable for me in a 24 hour readathon. I've actually learned from last time and gone with lots of shorter books this time because last time I did two I want to say bigger novels. They they weren't massive, but they were slightly thicker. Uh, so this time I've gone with lots of short ones. Okay, then we've got reread a favourite, or if you don't like rereading, then just read a book that you think is going to become a favourite. And for me, I've chosen Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I'm, yeah, love this. I haven't read it in years. I've only read it the once, so I'm really intrigued to reread it. And I was saying how much I want to read this in October like I want to do it and I feel like doing this in a 24 hour readathon is such a good idea however this one is the sl the longest one that I have so I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it completely because this one is 228 pages so it is still doable but it is on the slightly longer side so I'm thinking I'll at least start this and hoping to at least read 100 pages of this one. Oh, and this one um, is basically like the original Dark Academia book so if you do like Dark Academia and you haven't read a classic it might be worth trying this one. A lot of people argue it is one of the originals because of what it focuses on. You have Victor Frankenstein that's going to I think it's university where he's focusing in on biology and he argues that death can be beaten and so he sets about doing this experiment of bringing someone back from death and he does it with lots of different body parts and things. It's really good, really dark, perfect for October. And then the final prompt is just to read a book with Halloween colours in it. So whatever springs to mind when you think Halloween. For me I think orange of pumpkins, I also think purple for some reason and also green. So I have a book that incorporates both of those. This is The Professor by Charlotte Bronte. Now this doesn't actually match the like gothic feelings of this one but the cover really, I don't know, it just it works for Halloween in my opinion, plus this is a book I've been putting off for absolutely ages. Again, this is another one that I want to say I'm going to get to it, but I don't know if I'll be able to finish it. This is 200 pages long, but it is wall to wall text. Like, that is filled. There is no space at all. Um, and this one is Charlotte Bronte's first novel, but it wasn't published first. She actually had to rewrite this as Villette for it to be published and then I think this was one that they publish afterwards, like after she passed away. This is really good, like this is about an English teacher at an all girls school in Brussels who falls in love with one of his pupils and this is based on her own experiences. But she then reworked this into Villette later on and that got published. But I want to read this as The Professor and then read Villette. I want to read it in that order. So yeah, this is another one I would like to get on there. Now, what I did last time with this readathon and I'm doing the same again, these prompts if you can combine them do so don't feel like you have to read four books obviously if you're choosing to make this into a month-long readathon and you want to have books for the individual prompts then do so I always set about with books that I want to read for each of the prompts but I do do it in a way where I can amalgamate all the prompts technically for majority of these I can fit them all into this one book because it is a short story because it's less than 200 pages so to me that's a short story it also does remind me of like it doesn't have specifically Halloween colors I mean yes because it's all dark and grim and dreary and this is rereading a favorite of mine but the, just the uncensored version so actually this one book combines pretty much all the prompts but I know that the two that I'm prioritizing the most is actually the first two which is the short story and the uncensored version of Dorian Gray. These two are the priorities, however I would still love to at least start these two books. If not then I'm going to do what I did before which is make them a part of my TBR for the month. So I'm going to, honestly I'll make this so complicated for myself. These two will not be in my October TBR because they are specific to this readathon but these two if I can I want to make them as part of my October TBR and if I can start them on the 18th fantastic if not at least I've still read them for the month if that makes any sense like I said this is so laid back I originally the very first time I did 24 hour readathon I did it because I just wanted to get through a load of books on my TBR and yet I found I enjoyed it so much just having a day to just relax and read that I decided that I would do this bi-monthly 
but I had a few of you comment saying that you would love to take part, so I decided to start setting up these readathon announcements coming up before prompts, but leaving it open to you how you want to do it. Do what you want with it. This is supposed to be laid back, and it was mainly just for me just to be able to have a day where I don't feel guilty about spending it reading. And I was talking to Eric, one of my subscribers, and he was saying how he enjoyed that. Like he could go, no, I'm having a day reading and not feel bad about saying no to plans because of it. And that's the idea of this. So hopefully you will enjoy it. If you don't wanna take part, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to, but do see this as a reminder to take at least one day this month for you. That's what it's all about really. But there we go. That's my rambly readathon announcement. So yeah, let's see how we get on. Please do let me know know if you're taking part, what books you would like to read for it. I will be having more videos come out about different classics so if you want to start classic but don't know where to go I'm gonna have a video for that and also have a video for short classics so if you're wanting to read just some short classics for a 24 hour readathon I'll have that as well. Hopefully it will all come out before the 18th. I've talked a lot. I've actually filmed so much today and I'm so tired and yet I'm still talking. We're gonna stop. So thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, then let's put a Halloween emoji. Go for a Halloween emoji because this is gonna be an October readathon. So just go for it. And yeah, if you have enjoyed this, then please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. Social media links will be linked below and I will of course, Catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.